rather than focusing on did I waste time on that have I invested my time wisely because you're quite right time is the only resource that you can't get back you can make more money you can make more friends you can make more clients whatever but you can't make more money so I'm now thinking about how I'm investing my time did that conversation nourish me did it grow me did it stretch me um did it connect me you you know, like I have a need for connection, for sharing, for um, sharing space with, to highlight my, my common humanity with everybody. You know, what, what your struggles, did it enrich me? Did it help somebody else? So yeah, I also look at how I've invested my time because it's my greatest commodity that I can never get back. Ooh, greatest commodity, you, you can't, yeah, we can't get time back at, at all, yeah. like, right? now is this is the present moment for us like being present with you guys here it's this time when will it happen again you are human and you are perfect all right just you the way are you are just the way you are from head to toe inside out there's no mistakes on you at all you're absolutely perfect and the fact that maybe your words or your thoughts are not in flowing sequence is also perfect because that's real, yeah. right? Perfection, you know, like recently I've started to do some art classes, as you know, and the first time, so I'm like five weeks into my art class, I don't paint, I don't draw, I don't have any background, I don't have any natural gifts in that, but it's something I want to learn. And the way I, I enter the class, I wanted to like, wow, I want, everybody's work looks so good, you know, like they're yeah. such good artists. And the way the teacher, helped me was to say there's no perfect brush strokes just allow the 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 watercolors to mix and whatever you get you get whatever you see you see art is so subjective so that is the beauty of who you are rosie whatever comes out that is true and authentic you're perfect as you are you're magic okay yeah um so we were talking about end of year and wrapping up i love what you said herbie about um reviewing the year so that you can start the new year strong you didn't say it in that way but it, it, i'm paraphrasing <laughs> and i've been reflecting on that this year because i have some clients who are coming with me into the next year as in their coaching is continuing to the next year so while we're finishing off in 2023 i'm also looking ahead like and for me what i'm really grateful and more aware of this year is our ability to reinvent ourselves anytime right i strongly feel it and notice it in every way that i'm not the same person i sat here with you on these lives last year i've grown i've evolved i've deleted certain things you know certain blocks i've healed in certain ways again it's not about perfection rosie i haven't arrived in a perfect place but I've grown yeah. and I feel that in every way. And talking about how we're reinvesting time, because of my growth, because of my evolution, there's certain things that used to be important, deemed important to me a year ago, but now pff, completely irrelevant. There's certain conversations that I found difficult to enter that doesn't exist for me anymore. I am really getting the nearest to being unapologetically me I've ever been. And it's, <laughs> it's taking doing the work, it's taking being broken, it's taking healing, it's taking maybe even some parts desperation for, mm. because through desperation comes inspiration, right? And through brokenness comes the opportunity to be able to repair and come back in a different way you know the japanese have that beautiful art talking about art that when a something breaks around the house like a bowl they don't throw it away they they use like oh. some gold oh, yeah to infuse it back together so i'm here with all my broken pieces but i'm infused together and, I'm, and i've created a new artistic version of me that i'm really proud of oh yeah that's I, so beautiful man I, I wanted to, to chime in on that because I it's, I find it so important to understand like your growth. I have journals that I've <laughs> wrote back like four years ago, five years ago, and I always go back to them every year to reflect, to understand, am I that same person? 
And then just to acknowledge, like, man, I went through hell. Now look at me. Like, man, I went through all that pain, all that hurt, but it was worth it. I'm worth it. I'm worthy. And that gives me that that confidence to be like, okay, the next goals that I plan to hit for 2024, I'm going to be able to hit them because five years ago, I thought, you know, I was an alcoholic. I thought that suicide was an option. And it's just like, just to realize like, man, that, that hurt that, that sometimes we're too scared to face. It helps you evolve into that person that you need to be and understand that like, yeah, I can't change the past. The past is not, it is what it is, but now I acknowledge it. I don't have to believe that I am that hurt person. I'm not that damaged good. I'm actually good. <laughs> you know, and I'm going to embrace that. So I love how you said just putting putting those pieces that we deem broken and solidifying it into glue to with, with gold because you are golden. You are perfect in the way that you are. You your path is designed for you to understand like man, I can overcome all these hard obstacles. Maybe I do need some friends that I can hold me accountable that can be my support system to say like hey i'm struggling and it's not a sign of weakness it's a actually a sign of strength to say hey i need your expertise in this field do you mind helping me out assist me please because i want to be a better person i love that because what you just said there brought me uh uh to last week where i'm was about to go compete in a pickleball tournament and in that moment there there was so much like nerves and like I wanted to like express myself or talk to somebody and I called Alma and just with her just for us just talking together there was a sense of like release of just like oh like I just needed somebody to like hear me out to mm -hmm. hear what I like what's happening within me in that moment so that was very beautiful and and after talking to Alma I built like a sense of like Oh, I'm good. Like the confidence is like, I, I got that confidence back in me. Like, yes, I can play and compete in this pickleball. So having somebody there to um, guide you and, um, you know, just bounce things off and give you encouragement is huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And, and, you know, especially if you're um, doing anything in life, you need your support group that can help you push you along the way yeah. it's so hard to do this by ourselves and with you guys too i know that you have your own support group or a person that you can call on when yeah. you know things are like fuck and i know herbie you've been through so much that you know <laughs> um there's yeah no yeah no it, it's once i realized it's okay to to have a support system and not even just a support system but really learning how to communicate with that support system right for example you you, you read out you reach out to alma and said hey look i don't need any advice right now i just need to vent and then she came through and guides you like hey what, what, why are you tripping like you're great at this don't don't let someone throw you off your game don't get into your own head and and to have that person there in your corner helps out so much and to really sit there and say look this is what I need right now. Because most of the time we have these relationships and we don't know how to really communicate with that person on the way that we need support. And to have that conversation and say, look, I need a vent <laughs> or I need some advice or I just, I don't know what I need. I just, am I, am I overthinking this? And just having that dialogue and that conversation helps us out. And this is how we become better. Because when you have that person that understands you, that gets you, they don't want to see you fail. They want to see you be great because you are great and they're like hey let me just lift you up you just need a little a boost a pickup yeah 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 um i just want to add to that um very, very often uh, les brown says this beautifully he says when you're the person in the frame you can't see the picture right mm. and growth rosie like you said is super hard you know it's uncomfortable um many issues come up along the way but the beauty about it is that i didn't even give her advice I just had to hold a mirror for her to see her own reflection because she couldn't see herself in that moment of doubt and by reflecting what she can't see anymore so it's not me being clever or having any beautiful words it's just reminding her of who she is ah oh, it all clicked back again why she's doing it it all clicked back again okay 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 I got it now you know and sometimes that's all it takes 
to be a set of compassionate and attentive ears, allow the person to share whatever's coming up for them, and then just remind her of her path, her brilliance, and also that you're okay, you're all right, you're all right. You know, like, are you a father, hubby? Yes, we're, yeah. do you have kids? Yeah. yeah. You have kids, okay, yeah. so we're all yeah. parents, yeah. You know, when, when your kids were toddlers and they were learning to walk for the first time, they all fall a million times. You never said to the child, right, that's your hundredth fall today. Don't fall anymore. Stay, sit down. <laughs> you know, they just want to say, you're all right. You didn't hurt yourself. Keep going. You know, up you get. Let's go. Somebody to just be there and say, I saw you fall. I know it hurts, but you're all right. Keep going. And sometimes even as adults, we need that. I saw you hurt yourself. I saw you're afraid, but you're all right. Get up. Keep going. I'm here. Yeah. I, I want to add, add to that uh, because my kids are, are three and five. So I'm, I'm constantly building confidence in themselves. And now it's at a point where uh, the principal from my daughter's school came up to me and she said, hey, your daughter, she does these positive affirmations before she walks into school. <laughs> and wow. she was like, <laughs> and she was like, who like, you know, she told she told us that, that, you know, you guys taught her this, you know, the parents. And I'm like, yeah, I believe in that. I was like, because when I was a kid, no one really taught me positive affirmations. They didn't build that confidence. I was looking for, you know, positive affirmations in other people. Like, hey, you're doing a great job. Instead, it's like, man, I now, I, I, told, I told her that, but now even as an adult in the morning, before I brush my teeth, I tell myself positive affirmations. Like, I am smart. I am loved. I can change the world. And that's just the thing that I do. So this way, when I go, go out to this, world. You, don't, you never know what anybody's energy has. They, if they say something negative, I know that I'm not going to be bothered by it just because I have the confidence. I believe in myself that I'm doing the right thing. Did I make a bad decision or if this person cutting me off and flipping me off? That, that I don't know what they're going through. I'm not going to let that phase my confidence. I know I'm a good driver. I know I'm a good dad. I know. So just doing these things help me in my day-to-day -day life, especially when I go out and I speak and I'm on a stage and there's you know, other speakers there, I don't worry about what they do or what, how they say it or how they come across the audience. I have the confidence that I'm going to do the best of my abilities. They got me, they signed me to come here for a reason because of the confidence in the work, the inner work that I've been doing for all these years. Cool, I love that. How long have you been speaking? Uh, 2020. 2020. 2020. Do you remember? 2020, so like three years. Do you remember the first time you stepped on stage? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Was How was that? <laughs> oh, How yeah. was that? I man, heart racing, nervous, and after that event, I, I did pretty well. After that event, I started looking at myself in the mirror and I said, "Why am I nervous to share my story? Mm -hmm. This is my life." You know, like, why am I so nervous? People want to hear my story. Let me take time. And ever since that, I just view it as a conversation, whether it's sharing my story or if it's a presentation I'm doing. It's a conversation. That's mm -hmm. all it is. So it, it helped ease the, the nervousness, mm -hmm. you know, of like, oh, man, am I going to do a good job rocking stage or am I going to be terrible? It's just like it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. Just like how, how Rosie's like the, the host of this right now. It's just a, like I treat it like I'm the host. It's a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. And I, I've been seeing you uh, at more conferences or workshops that you're, you're doing, right? So you're a busy yes. man and you're yeah. more on a like more keynote speaking live to an audience, right? I, sometimes I use keynote, sometimes I don't, depending on the situation. I have a, an event next week that I'm doing that I'm going to have a couple of slides, but it's nothing like crazy. It's just a couple of slides talking about um, an organization, NAMI, that I'm working with. But I'm still presenting. So it's like, oh, you know, I'm just going to have a couple of slides talking about NAMI, but then I'm going to talk about the topic. So sometimes I use keynotes, sometimes I don't, depending on the situation. When I talk to the kids, high schoolers, there's no need to bring keynotes. They're not paying attention to that. Yeah, yeah, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're and not. So, so is there a difference between talking to, like, high school students versus yeah. adult? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, so, like, the connection with high schools, they, it's the energy that you bring but also making it relatable 
right? You don't want to come in and be like, oh, dad, like, hey, you know, I'm coming in as dad. Like, you want to make it relatable. So I always talk about, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the first suicide attempt I had when I was like 13. So it's always like around that age where I can connect with them. And then, you know, I used whatever music that they probably listen to, like um, like a Drake or a J. Cole. And I use that in, in there because I want to speak their language so they can understand that I'm not talking, you know, over them. I'm talking at them. And I, want, and I hope that, that my story or whatever, you know, topic they want me to present can connect. And when it's talking to adults, it's just a conversation. So we're adults. So I can be more free. <laughs> You know, and and like I'm a peer. I'm a person with lived experience. I'm not someone that's gonna look down at you or or belittle you. I love, love that. I love that you cater to like the high school kids by putting music that are that they listen to and making relatable to them. I love that. So yeah, every, go ahead. Go ahead, Alma. Uh, okay. Music is a great way to connect with teenagers. You know, I have teenagers in the house. And also they have a different set of vocabulary that they use, you know, and every now and then, most of the time I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> but most of the sometimes every now and then if I drop one word that they know I wouldn't normally use, they get so excited. What did you say, mommy? You know, like <laughs> I'll, I'll try and pick something up. My outfit is slaying today. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are like, no, no, no don't say that. I go, I go up a few notch that I'm not this boring mummy, but you know, I get a bit streetwise and a bit trendy and relatable for them. So I totally get that. Uh, what are you talking to the teenagers about? Because I have a teenager. So I talk to them to see if they have like a safe space. Mm. You know, it's, it's very challenging as a parent, as you guys know, to be a parent and not their friend. Mm. But you want to make sure that the, the conversation is, if they're struggling mentally, that, hey, I can actually talk to them without a judgment. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just tell them the experience, like, I didn't have a safe space. Mm -hmm. And and for me, I, you know, I wish I was stronger <laughs> to say, like, hey, mom, hey, dad, I'm struggling. So now, like, I use, like, certain words, like, hey, if you are struggling with them, let them know. Mm -hmm. They care about you. They love Love you. They're not going to judge you and be like, man, why, you know, I'm doing all of this. They want you to be the best version of you. Mm -hmm. So create a safe space like that. And then I will have parents that would either t ask me at the event or DM me later, mm -hmm. like, hey, what is a good thing that I can do with my, my, you know, my son or my daughter when it comes to talking about mental health? And I'm just like, well, give them a notebook, let them be authentically dumb, write in it, but they can express themselves. And you just read it, you know, twice a week or, or you know, twice twice a month or whatever, so you can kind of get an idea of how they see the world or what they're going through. Because if they're getting bullied at school, they may not tell you because they don't want you to think less of them. Mm -hmm. Or if they don't know how to communicate, maybe this may help you understand, okay, let me stop being so hard on my child. Let me actually see what's going on. Or, hey, this is alarming. Let's seek therapy or let's seek counseling so you can, you know, not have these negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Uh, Herbie, I want us to serve people listening really richly because you touched on something so incredibly important. Mental health is becoming more topical because we're speaking about it and we're rec recognizing that it exists. Uh, we, Rosie and I both have teenagers and we know that most teenagers, as we we're talking about, don't always connect with their parents and they feel like their parents won't understand or they don't want to hurt their parents or they don't even want to admit that close to home that they're struggling. So if somebody is watching right now, a teenager or a parent, and they feel like they're struggling, what are some of the common ways that teenagers struggle in today's world? So you would start noticing their behavior, the way they change, right? Um, for example, if you see, if you have a teenager who's outgoing mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, they start shifting and they're isolating themselves or you start noticing grades drop off dramatically. You start seeing their parents. If, they, if they're always like nice, neat, like to say, uh, fresh, as I like to say, and you start realizing like they're not taking care of their clothes or not taking care of themselves. Or if you start seeing, and this is the thing you have to be careful with like the phone. If you start seeing, you know, certain things that they're doing on the phone, if you notice like, man, they used to, be on social media a lot now they're not on social media a lot like you know like like watch that and just watch the things that they do and to have the 
the conversation, just admit like, hey, I struggle with that as your age mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> High school is something that it, it can make and break a lot of people, mm -hmm. confidence, everything. So just like, making that relatable thing as far as like a connection like man i struggled in high school i didn't get this i wasn't the brightest i didn't even have all these opportunities i just want to make sure you're safe mm -hmm. seeing things like that helps out just humanizing yourself and not being that authority figure but just being that person like i get it so if they've recognized signs that my child may be struggling what's the first step to approaching that child what should the parent do just ask them mm -hmm. just just Actually, with no judgment mm -hmm. yeah just just have a conversation because nine out of ten times they're probably going to reject you at first but just show the concerns and just listen mm -hmm. like you displayed there earlier <laughs> you didn't do anything to help out rosie you just listen mm -hmm. and then you pick up the cues and then from there just ask them hey do you want to see you know counseling or anything like that would if that's okay then you do it together and just do it as a, as a as a team. Don't do it as a, I'm going to look for a therapist because you want to find someone, a counselor that connect with your child. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that that counselor can speak somewhat of their language and not just say, okay, this is the best one in town. But if you and the, you and the, you know, if the, the child and the counselor doesn't mesh well, then it's not going to work at all. Yeah. Uh, as a Ghanaian, and an African, just to make you guys laugh. Normally, if you notice something like that, you just beat the child. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty boy, go wash. <laughs> I'm just joking. Please don't beat your child. I'm just making you guys laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's a really important point, right? To be able to be comfortable knowing that you have what it takes to approach your own child you know, with open arms, open heart, and just speak to what you've noticed with, um, God put all of our guts in our bodies, right? And as a mother or father watching, your gut will tell you that something is not right. It's intuitive, you know, we, the umbilical cord may be cut, but it's still connected between mother and child. And if you feel it in your spirit, if you feel it in your soul that something is not quite right, follow that hunch and see where it leads you and have a sense of, curiosity with no judgment like you said herbie and just to get close to your child make them feel safe so that they can open up and share i love that i love that thank you guys so much this is a blessing to have you or beyond and, and alma so i want uh let's end with um how how should we end this <laughs> <laughs> so okay so i haven't done an ig live in a I'm, long time so I've i'm like an idea. i am rusty really rusty we, so we thank you are rusty. both of you guys we. for helping me <laughs> out when i'm just like uh, you, know, you know i'll always bring some bling cards hubby you haven't played this with me before rosie's asking how how should we end and i love i have a game called find your bling right um and they're basically a deck of cards and it relates to anything that's showing up in your heart or in your mind, okay? So the way, Rosie, can, do I have your permission? Should we end with uh, Find Your Blin? Yeah, yeah, start with Irby first. Okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, y'all just gonna put me on the spot. <laughs> um, we've been talking about life. This live has been about life, the ups and downs of life, being a student of life, being a student of ourselves, right? And uh, having that flexibility to just try new things. Rosie's talking about uh, stepping outside of her comfort zone and taking picket ball. You've been talking about stepping on stage and reaching out to people in service of others. And then we've been reflecting on, has this year been a good year? And what are the evidence of a good year? Taking an inventory on what worked, what didn't work, all the information is useful, right? So now, we're wrapping up 2023 with a view of building momentum with what worked to take it into 2024. And I want you to ask me a question, something like, who do I have to become to be the greatest speaker amongst the teenage community? Because you spoke to us about taking stage and helping teenagers. For example, that's just a, you don't have to use that question. Who do I, what's good? Like, ask me a question relating to what you want to achieve in 2024. Oh, 
Okay, all right. <laughs> so you want me to ask you a question of, of... But it's for you. It's not, you're oh. not asking. It's a coaching question. So it's like you're so it's a question for me. Journal. Yeah, you ask. It's for you. And then I'll pick a card and see how the card relates. Okay. So, yeah. No, uh, this is... Oh, I don't like you right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, because... I, no, I no. literally time. No, no. I, I literally just had this conversation with my brother not even 20 minutes ago <laughs> before I even hopped on. And the question I, I asked myself is, what is it going to take me? Okay. I, I, you let me know when you're ready. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. What is it going to take okay. me? What is it going to take me to become an international speaker? Ooh. You see, I've got psychic powers. Yeah, that's why I said I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Ghanaian right there. <laughs> okay, beautiful question. Amazing question. So his question is, guys, what is it going to take me to become an international speaker? Okay, so, Abby, I have some cards here, right? And they could have the answer for you right so you have a choice okay the choice is as follows there's a deck of cards from the believe pack love pack inspiration new beginnings growth and diamonds within what would you Ooh. like man Diamonds with them. Ah, hang on. I didn't plan on playing this game. <laughs> diamonds. <laughs> diamonds. Diamonds with them. Diamonds with them. Yeah. That's this one. Okay. Oh, shoot. Okay. One, one second. Hang on. I need to pick up a different day. Hang on. If that one is all mixed up. Where are we? Diamonds with it. Okay. There we go. This is what I need. Sorry, Rosie, I wasn't that organized. I didn't ask <laughs> Diamonds with it. And I have Look, I here it is. even got my notebook. I even yeah. got my notebook. Diamonds I'm ready. Within. So, it is about the power of words, Diamonds Within. What we repeatedly think and say are affirmations that's becoming reality. Mm. Every diamond has its own unique personality which grows under pressure. And it's the pressure that makes us shine. When you choose a diamonds within card, notice how the words resonate within you. Infuse love in every thought because they become the words that shape your reality and your future. I love it. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Thank you. Hang on, hang on. You haven't done yet. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to shuffle this Diamonds Within deck of cards. It's so, there's so many, and you got a choice. You have to pick one. Okay. Oh, hang on. Is that okay. true? Yeah. So you tell me where to stop. Now. Now, that one there, right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh God, let me try and pull it out. Hang on. This one right here is what you chose. And it says, ooh, I love it. My intuition is my ultimate guide. And when I follow it, amazing things happens. My intuition is my, Herbie, can you see it's upside down probably for you guys. My intuition is my ultimate guys, guide. And when I follow it, amazing things happen so there's over 150 cards and you chose this one and your question was what is it going to take for me to become an international speaker does that answer your question yep <laughs> <laughs> explain to us what this, explain to us what this means to you so to me it, it i really don't like you right now <laughs> <laughs> so to me I've been following my 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 intuition, my, my gut, mm -hmm. and my gut was saying, take a break, re refocus your energy, because right now you're shelling way too 
too much energy on things that 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 you don't really need to, to focus on. You need to focus on, you know, putting yourself out there better, you know, as far as like, you know, social media wise, but also making those connections and, and lock it in and just like practicing, practicing, studying, studying, and don't change. Just block out the badness and don't change. Don't switch it up. Don't be like, oh, hey, I should do more of this or I should do more of that. Just honestly, just lock it in, trusting my, my gut and my gut is saying, Block out the noise. Put your head down. You are great. Don't question yourself if you are not, and just keep keep staying focused. Amazing. You're not just great. You are the greatest, as Muhammad Ali says. If you're going for an international oh my, speaker, I, great, oh great is God. not enough. You are the greatest. You are. I'm gonna tell you this is a a, a full circle. I did an interview last week. And the guy, uh, just the guy Jeff Davis said, "You're the greatest mental health advocate of all time." Right. And then <laughs> here I am. I literally just did it last Thursday, and you just said it today right. on Thursday. I'm when, I'm gonna go play the lottery, guys. <laughs> <laughs> when he wins, Rosie, he's buying us all tickets to go out yeah. to celebrate. Him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. They know me for sure. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, you know what you I see. Greatest. Yeah. You know what I see yeah. coming is 2024. Yeah. Irby's international speaker. Like, like it's it's happening. It's already here. It's already here. Who knows? You you might be in London. Yeah, I was with Alma. Say, by, by the way, he <laughs> yes. is. Because he's speaking to us lot in London. So you're you're already transatlantic. So it's happening. <laughs> I love right? it. Thank and you. It's happening. <laughs> it is. It is. And, it, and it, words it, matter. Your turn. your turn. What's your question? I have to write it down so I don't forget. Oh, shoot. What is my question? Um, how, how can I be. Uh, how? Uh, no. And how can I stop being a scary cat? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how can I stop being a scary cat? Okay. Right. Can you just tell us a little bit? I've got your question down. How can I stop being a scaredy cat? In what domain? Where are you being a scaredy cat? Uh, um, doing lives like this, um, like stepping up into different areas of my life. Okay. On a scale of one to 10, how scary was this live? <laughs> Um, a seven because a part of me was like, like, who cares? Just, just go on, just go on, go practice. Sorry, I just want to be, I want to be clear. Seven being, ten being scary and one being not scary at all, or the, which way around? Um, ten being scary. Ten being scary. So it was a seven, seven yeah. scary. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. To start or throughout the whole thing? Um, um, just to start, I guess, because it's, it's been a while, so. Okay, okay. All right. Well, so we'll pick your cards then, okay. right? Okay. So you have inspiration, belief card, growth, new beginnings, diamonds within, bling boost. What would you like? Let's go new beginnings. New yeah. beginnings, okay. So I'll find the new beginnings here. So remember your question, how can I stop being a scaredy cat? Okay, new beginnings. So, ooh, new beginnings deck is all about a fresh start. It's like you have a magic wand in your hand and that wand makes all your wishes come true, creating new mindsets and new opportunities. When you choose the new beginning cards, read it and notice how any old energy that no longer serves you can fade away for something new and exciting to flow in. Mm. A fresh start is good for the soul. Notice how this card relates to your question. Find your power from within and take a leap of faith. You will be amazed by what you find on the other side. Okay. Yeah. And now I'm going to go get a new beginnings deck of cards.
And you can choose. Uh, the third one, number three. From, from this side or that side? From that side there, yeah. From this side, one, two, and three. That would be this card right here. Put this down. So the question is, how can I stop being a scaredy cat? And Bling says, how can I detach from the outcome and let the universe show me the way? There you go. <laughs> Tell us what this means to you and your question. How does it relate to your question? Okay, okay read, read that card again. So it says, how can I detach from the outcome and let the universe show me the way? How can I? detach from the outcome and let the universe show me the way um to have no attachment or expectation of what the outcome should be mm -hmm. and this this message replies to me back again over and over it's like just go and have fun mm -hmm. who cares about the outcome just go and be yourself mm -hmm. because that's all i know how to do and be mm -hmm. so just showing up like i'm here mm -hmm. I might not get all the words that I want to say out mm. and it's okay to um sometimes my my brain it it's like quicker than what it's coming coming out mm. so it's just learning to like pause and like I'm all right I'm all right you are all right Rosie yeah. and um I'll also just gift you something not as your coach but as your friend it's the story you tell yourself because herbie and everybody watching rosie is the boldest badass girl ever she will go live anytime every anytime <laughs> but she likes to tell herself a story notice how her story keeps her stuck it's not real it's not the truth it is just the story that she tells herself and i would say change your story divorce your story and marry your truth the truth is you're badass the lie is you tell stories that don't match your truth. That's she's not scared so at cool. all. She's a 10. She'll wake me up at three <laughs> o'clock in the morning going, do you want to go live? I love it. a story. I'm really nervous. I'm really this, but it's a story. It's not true. Yeah, that's true. So the story keeps you stuck and afraid and um, a scaredy cat. But the truth is you're the boldest girl I know, Rosie. Thank okay. You. And step Thank back you. right yeah. now. What I got from this, especially this live, is believing in yourself, having the confidence to, to go out there and just doing it. Who cares if someone laughs at you? Who cares? It's not about their opinion. It's about how you view yourself and just being able to just do it and have fun. Live life without fear. That's the motto I like to, to go by. I love that. Alma? Uh, I, I want to plug with your permission, Rosie that I'm really passionate about helping people to see the brilliance that they are just as they are right now. Most people believe that I'm a scaredy cat. Uh, what is it going to take for me to become an international speaker? Whatever it is that you're desiring is also desiring you and you are already it. Your life circumstances, the challenges, the struggles, the ups, the downs, the triumphs, they've all built you up to hold, hold that intention or want to be the vessel for others in that way. So it's a lesson to myself. It's a lesson that took me the longest to learn. You are already what you're seeking and you just need to start being it, believing it and acting accordingly. And that's exactly what confidence is as well. It's having the ability to move with ease and grace, just being yourself. And Rosie, you talk, nobody's going to replicate Amma Primicino better than me. I can't, you know, I can't copy whatever. Nobody else can copy. You can't be somebody else. You can only be yourself. And in being yourself, that's when your light shines the brightest. And that's when your, your, the clarity, your wisdom, everything you know becomes so right when you just step into the brilliance that you are and understand that you, you're literally it already. There's nothing else. You can only grow and improve and get stronger from there. Yeah, so thank you, Rosie, for inviting me into this conversation. I really enjoyed playing with you both tonight. Yeah, thank you. Or today at your end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for Alma for encouraging me to go live. And I've been hesitating, but I'm here now. But, dude, this is life. Like, what, what can, can go right? <laughs> what can go right in this conversation? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> 
what can go right? And um, dude, I love you guys. Thank you for all you guys listening. Uh, let's go out <laughs> there and be us because there's nobody <laughs> like us. So let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Yo, Anytime. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having me. <laughs>